For more, let's bring in Craig Snyder. He is the president and CEO of the World Affairs Council of Philadelphia. And uh, thank you for joining us, Craig. And uh, President Trump and Putin, well, it seems to have yielded at least one very tangible result, the implementation of a ceasefire in southwestern Syria. Craig, how significant is that? Well, first, uh, thanks for having me. Um, I think it, it is, um, it's a good step forward. Um, that area uh, of Syria uh, can perhaps be deconflicted. I mean, we've seen ceasefires before that haven't held. Uh, but if this one does, it minimizes uh, the, the further involvement uh, of Israel and Jordan facing uh, Iranian-supported uh, troops. So it, uh, it, it's a step uh, forward. But uh, as you know, Syria is sort of an endlessly complicated uh, and deadly jigsaw puzzle. A lot more needs to happen before there's any kind of peace in the area. Given the complications in Syria, and that's a very valid point that you make, uh, still the fact that there was an agreement reached between Putin and Trump, uh, does this signal hope for better U.S.-Russia relations on, on other issues? Well, I think there is um, a, a real effort, uh, a real uh, interest on the part of the Trump administration, which was expressed during the campaign, uh, to, to have better relations with Russia and to try to reframe uh, the issue uh, as uh, Russia, uh, as a part of a coalition against what the what many in the administration view as the greater threat, uh, which which uh, they call radical Islamic terrorism. Um, so I think there's a, there's a, a desire to do that, an effort to do that on the part of of this administration. Uh, of course, it's been stymied uh, by. Uh, the ongoing discussions uh, about Russian interference in the U.S. election, uh, at, which puts a, a political pressure of a great uh, kind, and appropriately so, uh, on the administration not to uh, make things too warm and, and cozy uh, with Putin. Uh, so there's, it, it's really, uh, he, it, Trump is in a way kind of caught in a bind, perhaps of his own making, but nonetheless a bind between uh, wanting to move the relationship uh, in uh, a, a kind of a fundamentally different direction, redefining what the purpose of the relationship is about, uh, but uh, has to deal with the perception uh, that doing that could, could, could be uh, payback uh, for uh, support by Putin in the election. Yeah, that, that is a very complicated uh, scenario that you paint there. But uh, Trump did address the issue of Russian election interference head on. And there were differing accounts uh, from Tillerson and uh, Russia's Lavrov as to how uh, Trump received Putin's denial of involvement. Uh, clearly an area of impasse there. And uh, Craig, many say that the right move is at the stage to just agree to disagree and to move on to areas of cooperation. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with what you just said is uh, the Trump doctrine of trying to have better relations with Russia as a good thing? Well, I, I myself am more of a sort of foreign policy uh, traditionalist, if you will. I, I think that the, the, the principles of American, sort of the broad principles of American foreign policy all the way back to World War II have been sound and successful for the most part. And those principles have always included a wariness about Russian expansionism and a desire to contain that. Um, I think Putin represents a continuity with the Soviet Union in terms of a desire for Russian expansionism. Uh, and I think that is... Uh, a potential threat to uh, not just the United States, but to the to the West, uh, the construct that uh, the president gave the speech about yesterday in Poland. So, uh, my own my own view is that we have to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, there, the world is complicated. Uh, there are threats or potential threats uh, in many directions. One of them is um, potential behavior uh, by some of which already already existing behavior by Putin's regime, um, and I and I think uh, that. Has has to be taken very seriously, even while we try to deal with other things. And uh, Craig, uh, to your point, there was a disagreement on the issue of North Korea, no kind of resolution there. And uh, Russia in the United Nations has uh, been blocking uh, a resolution that's being put together by the United States, or at least blocking a statement. What's in this for Russia? Why is Russia resisting the U.S. on North Korea? Well, I think it's really just part of a pattern uh, that uh, Putin has defined 
um, his place in the world as being uh, a counterweight, the counterweight, uh, to the uh, prestige, the uh, hegemony, as he would see it, uh, of the United States. And so uh, it's sort of anything that's not good for the United States, uh, he acts as if it's good for Russia, and indeed acts as if it's good for the world. I think in the case of North Korea in particular, even more so than in a lot of other places, uh, he's playing with fire there. Uh, there needs to be great power uh, coalescence of some kind around uh, the North Korean issue, uh, or we could be facing a, a major war that could get out of hand um, and, and be not only devastating on the Korean Peninsula, that's a given that it would be horrible there, but could spread. Um, and Russia is an adjoining, it's a neighboring country. Uh, it needs to worry about the use of nuclear weapons. It needs to worry about the displacement of refugees. So I think the, 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 the position that Putin has taken so far uh, has been, you know, sort of against the best interest of Russia in, 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 uh, in a broader sense, but consistent with his attempt to be the opposite of the United States. Mm. Craig Snyder, thank you so much. We have to leave it there.